This is Coaster Kobayashi. He is in 11th grade. He is from Japan. He went to Canada as an exchange student. And he showed interest in the different cultures in school, language, and religion. He learned how to think globally and in the future. He wants to work as a foreign diplomat. He likes watching movies, especially the movie Hitch. This is Morika Ishihara. She is in the she is in twelfth grade. Her parents are Korean, but she was raised in Japan. She likes watching movies and singing karaoke. Morika likes the English language and she is interested in religion. This is Sophia Ulrich. She is in 10th grade and she is from Germany. She likes Japanese snacks, but she doesn't like macro. <laughs> she came to study in Japan because she was interested in the sound of Japanese language. She wants to become an interpreter or translator. Sophia is fond of music and anime especially Naruto. Mm -hmm. This is Maria Brunekesco. She is in 11th grade and she is from Norway, but, her, but she was born in Osaka, Japan. She came to Japan because she admires the Japanese high school uniform. Mm -hmm. Maria is a pianist and I would love to share a video of her playing Maria will return back to her country this month, but she likes Japan, so she wants to come back to Japan to attend a music university. This is Wen Zhou Wang. She is in the she is in eleventh grade, and she is from China. She likes Akihabara and Otaku, and she especially likes Naruto. In June, she is going back to China, but she is planning to come back to Japan for university. She is studying hard to become a doctor. Ms. Asami Sanki graduated San Jose State University. During the four years after graduating, she got a teaching license. Her hobbies are soccer and mother life. She wishes to contribute in the development of the Japanese English education and raise high school students into global students. Hello. We are from Minato Sogo High School and today we will talk about education. First, we will show you a role play where we will all act as ex exchange students coming together and talking about their experiences. And we are representing four nations. Norway, Germany, China, and Japan. After the role play, we will continue the presentation and talking about the education systems and have a conclusion. Hi! Hi. Oh, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> it's so good to see you too. Yeah. It's been a year. Yeah, it's so long. Where have yeah. you been? I've been to Germany. Germany, and you? I've been to Norway. Norway. I've been to China. China, that is so nice. And now we are here in Japan. Yes. 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 Was it cold there? Yeah, very cold. What kinds of schools did you go to? I went to normal public high school. Same. Same. I see. So, Moe, now when you're back in Japan, how does it feel like? Oh, it's so great to have a uniform again because in Germany, we have to wear our own gloves every day. In Norway, we didn't have school uniform as well. Oh, in China, we have school uniform, but just the is the um, our special event. Oh, we love wearing the Japanese school yeah, uniform. It's so cute. Kawaii. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, another thing that's surprising in Germany was that people raise their hands more than Japanese students during classes. And they have a lot of discussions. In Norway, I thought the same. And they see in almost all of the classes. I wonder why. In Japan, there are so many people in one class. Yeah. Maybe 
that's the reason why um, they don't have a place and the money to do so. Yeah, here we take notes by using our hand. But I think that is good too. I think you learn better and faster by doing so. Another thing that is different are the club activities. Yeah. In Japan there are so many different clubs and the members are always showing up. Yeah, there aren't so many club activities in Germany and Norway, right? That's right. In Norway they had a really loose time to do. Sometimes they had break time for two hours. Two hours? That's so long! In China, during the break time, we went home and we attached. So they didn't even lunch at school. I see. You know, I have an image of the tiny schools being so hard and strict. Yeah. How do you get into the universities? Is it the same <coughs> system as in Japan? No, instead of taking some special exams or for the university you want to, they, they take a national exam and a great design which university you can go to. Oh, interesting. It's different from Japan, but I can see you acting as a group, which is really diff uh, important in Japan. That's something I learned here. Yeah, me too. The ability to work and think as a group. I think in Norway it is more important with individuality. Yeah, I think individuality and the ability to work as a group are both important. It is important to be able to say your thoughts and meanings to other people. First, then, when everybody has something to say, we can start some of the opinions. Yeah, and then, for example, present here as a group. So, group work is connected with individuality. Now, we will continue the presentation talking about the different school systems. In Germany, there are no school uniforms. We believe that this connects with the European culture about being independent. The teachers ask some, ask some questions and make the students talk and think. There's there are few people in the class, therefore it's easy to have discussions without anyone being left out. The school doesn't have a class, so if the students want to join, for example, a soccer club or a choir, they have to be independent and find clubs by themselves outside the school. Uh, <coughs> While some Japanese people have long school ways, in Germany it is normal to go to a school near your house. In Norway, there are usually no exams for entering university. The grades from high school decide if you get in or not, except for art schools. Then you have to take an audition. After high school, almost everyone takes a year off. They travel, work, go camping, walk in the mountains, and rest. After that, they start to study. Since education is free, there are very few private schools. When entering high school, all the students have to buy a PC, which they get to buy really cheap. All the tests and homework are done by using the PC. They hand in on the internet. The time schedule is very loose, and all the students have their own individual schedule. They don't have homerooms and seldom act as a class. In China, some students live away from their parents while attending to high school, while some live home. If the student leaves home, it is normal to go home in a break time and eat lunch. When it comes to entering university, they take national exam. The result of the exam decides which university you can go to. If you get a high score, you get to enter the high level schools if you want to. The high schools have a uniform, but, but they don't wear it every day, like in Japan. They only wear it on special e events, like graduation ceremony and the important meetings. In Japan, they don't pay as much taxes as in Norway. We think that is why the schools are free and not high tech. Many foreigners have an image of, Japanese, of Japan being modern and high-tech, 
but schools are actually pretty old-fashioned. Private schools are often established by famous people and it costs money. And the exams are also different from public schools. The Japanese language has a special way to talk to people who are older than you, called Keigo. Students should use Keigo when talking to their teachers, but some don't. That can be both good and bad. The students get really attached to their teachers since the long time they spend in school. Um, compared to schools in Europe. They talk a, little, a lot and have good relationship with their teachers. And they have homeroom every day. The class is really important, especially when they do the school festivals, sport festivals and school trips. We tried to find some common points in all four countries, but we couldn't find exactly one. But we believe um, that we should focus on the good points of all of the four countries and take learning from them. In this case, that would be how to act as a group and how to be individual. If you are in a group but aren't able to say your meanings and are afraid to explain them to other people, you aren't acting as a good group member. And it is important to be individual, but always in schools you are attached to other people like teachers and students, so you are never alone. So that means that group work and being individual is truly connected. So we believe an education system where the teachers focus on both would be the best for the students. Thank you.